Welcome back to my channel, Ancient Ones. Brothers and sisters, I'm your host, Ramudisa, the High King. On today's video, Real Family will be discussing more of the demographic crisis that is affecting the West, primarily the most developed nations like the US, Canada, Britain, France, Italy. In previous videos, we have covered the conversation of Italy, right? As well as Western nations in general. Today we'll be talking about France. France too has been facing a demographic crisis. By demographics, we mean people. That's right. People are what makes society happen. People work at the factories, they work in the streets, they work in the medical healthcare institutions, they work in the office, they work everywhere. People doing everyday things is what makes society turn. So that makes the world go around. When you don't have people, all these things come to a standstill. They come to a severe slowdown, threatening economic development and prosperity. Next thing you know, everything, de everything is declining. Debilitating institutions, infrastructure, and there's no one to replace it because there are no new humans being born, as is the crisis in the West. They haven't been having enough children for so long that they are literally on the United Nations extinction watch list. As in no new Italians being born, no new French people being born, no new British, no new American peoples, no new children entering schools, no new graduates, no new people entering the workforce as a result. Just retirement age people and declining society and that is the greatest nightmare that the west is going through right now right next to trying to gain control of africa's resources whether it's directly the minerals that we possess beneath our feet or our cultural heritage you name it all on top of the past 400 years where they have been unaliving african peoples doing everything in their power under the kissinger report to lower our birth rates why so that they could come and get our resources without any African to resist them. And now the West is facing a challenge they cannot come from. Only watch as the future happens. Why Macron wants France to have more babies. From TLDR News EU. This was posted about five hours ago. Let's check it out. See what's going on. Last Tuesday, French President Emmanuel Macron called for a demographic rearmament to reverse France's declining birth rate, describing uh -oh. the issue of demographic decline as the taboo of the century. Macron's speech came just a few hours after France's statistical institute, the ANSEE, announced that France had seen just 678,000 births in 2023. The wow, the taboo of the century. Six. 173,000 number since 178,000 births in 2020 announced that France had seen just 678,000 births in 2023 678,000 in a country of millions of people no new soldiers are going to be entering the army there are not nearly enough being born fast enough at the rate by which they are dropping like flies. Three, the lowest number since World War II and nearly 20% fewer than in 2010. Hey, Macron's hey. announcement has already been criticized by certain feminist and left-wing politicians in France mm -hmm. though, with the French Green Party leader even comparing Macron's new plans to the popular book and TV show, The Handmaid's Tale. This I'm sure it would seem as though, isn't it? Trying to rearrange societal laws in order to force babies. This after they were hell bent on convincing the world that overpopulation was a threat. And now that underpopulation is the real risk, they are literally teetering on the brink of Handmaid's Tale society. It's crazy. This isn't entirely surprising either. Phrases like demographic rearmament are more often associated with right-wing populists mm -hmm. than central. 
the populace right wants you to make more babies. The question is how? When it comes to reversing the continent's sagging birth rate, governments are shooting blanks. Ah! That is wild. That is wild. In Europe, the political push to drive up birth rates has been led by Hungary's Viktor Orban. First, Christopher Furlong. Dirty images. Chris technocrats like Macron and the loudest advocates for higher birth rates include Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, Serbian President Alexander Vucic, and Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney, who spent the past few months warning about Italy's demographic winter. Mm-hmm. We covered that clip, didn't we? No new births in three months. That was Italy's nightmare. Serbia to use cash to boost birth rate efforts population decline wow they're desperate to run away from this a pedestrian pushes a baby stroller in belgrade serbia hungary tries for baby boom with tax breaks and loan forgiveness hungarian women with four children or more will be exempt for life from paying income tax wow the prime minister has said unveiling plans designed to boost the number of babies being born the real crisis afflicting the West. They've been struck barren. Mm, mm, mm. However, while it might have been a fringe topic half a decade ago, in the past year or so, demographics, or more specifically, the demographic crisis facing much of the developed world, mm -hmm. has entered the political mainstream, as falling birth mm -hmm. rates have put an ever-increasing strain on national budgets. So in this video, we're going to take a look at why Macron wants France to have more babies. Here's Keep in mind, family, no new humans also means no new tax workers entering the bracket. No new people to keep up the government budget. A society full of retirement age people. Royal family, that is a stagnation, number one, and a slow decline into a society of what was what america used to be what britain used to be what london used to be what canada used to be what paris rome netherlands you name it because africa's youth demographic outnumbers them by far the world is projected to be Afro by 2050, 2070. Because we're the only continent on Earth where new humans are still being produced. Spread forth and multiply was the classic instruction. Say what you will on religion on that note. But the fact of the matter is, Africa is the only country, Africa is the only continent on Earth. And African peoples on the continent and in the diaspora are the only peoples. The first peoples are still the only peoples producing people. How wild is that? The mutations of Earth have been struck barren. Policy proposals and why they probably won't work. Mm -hmm. Before we start, if you haven't already, please wait when we release new videos. Now, the first thing to say about France's apparent fertility crisis is, well, it's not that bad, at least by European standards. Mm. Generally, when people talk about a fertility crisis, they're referring to the fact that in most developed countries, fertility rates, that is the average number of babies per woman, is mm -hmm. below the replacement rate of 2.1. When a country's birth rate falls below this level, then assuming no dramatic increases in life expectancy, their population will begin to get older and eventually start shrinking. Mm. Now, an older population means more pensioners and less workers, which in turn means that you need a higher tax burden to maintain your current quality of public services. Again, assuming no dramatic increases in productivity or the pension age. Anyway, for most of recent history, France has actually had a relatively high fertility rate. Like many Western countries, France's fertility rate fell below replacement in the 1970s. Wow. But it's held up relatively well since, hovering between 1.8 and 2 since the turn of the millennium. 
For context, that's significantly higher than the EU average of 1.5. And France has what? had the highest fertility rate. So all of the EU is below replacement level. All the West technically below replacement level. This is why in Africa we need to watch out for these things, family, because these NGOs keep coming to Africa to convince us of all sorts of things. Right? That in order to be prosperous, we must seek medical health care the same way that they have engaged in the West, which is lowering our birth rates. To what end? Not because they genuinely care about the health care requirements of African women and men, but because the Kissinger report said that foreign policy of the West is to lower and decrease and depopulate the African continent. Lower our birth rates, decrease new African life being born, and eventually eradicate the African. Meanwhile, they're struggling to replace their own people and trying to trick us to doing the same thing. This guy who commented... Let's not assume that because uh, fertility is declining in certain regions over there, it's because genuinely fertility is declining. No. It's because your Western NGOs are hard at work. They're hard at work trying to reduce Africa's birth rates in order to, uh, to be equal to y'all. But that's not going to work. Because we're the ancient peoples as Africans. We're the first. Spread forth and multiply. We are pro-natalist by culture, by spiritual... Beliefs, societal practices, you name it. Everything is about new life in this place where life began. In the G7 since 2010. Now, this is something that Macron actually acknowledged in last Tuesday's speech when he said that until recently, we were a country for which this was a strength. France's high fertility rate has always been something of a mystery to European political scientists, though. France does have some pro-family policies. Families with three or more children, for instance, enjoy family non brewers or large family status, which comes with benefits such as reduced train travel and a 10% pensions bonus for the parents. And France has a cash subsidy for families with children equivalent to child benefit in the UK. But France's child benefit scheme only kicks in after the second child. And France actually mm. has pretty miserly maternity and paternity leave. French parents are allowed to spend work for three years. But while parental leave benefits start at 650 euros for the first few weeks, it quickly falls to just 100 euros a week. This wow. isn't very much money for a new parent. And the number of people using the scheme has halved over the past 10 years. Mm. So now only 14% of women and 1% of men make use of it. Nonetheless, despite not having particularly generous policies, France has always had one of the highest birth rates in the EU. So why is Macron worried then? Well, as we see it, there are four reasons for Macron's sudden alarm. Firstly, even if France's fertility rates have been higher than the European average, it's still lower than the replacement rate, which mm. means an aging population. Second, So regardless of them being the highest fertility rate or whatever in Europe, it means nothing in the grand scheme of things. You're still scheduled for extinction, like every Western nation in the foreseeable future. The day is swiftly coming when there are no new French babies being born. Classic pure blood no new people entering society to keep the French culture and identity alive as we have known it today. And that is why they're afraid of African migrants and migrants from other black and brown countries around the world. Because we're coming through with our cultures and traditions intact, our pro-natality intact. And so we are destined in a few short generations to be the next people. The next French, the next Germans, the next Polish. And so they don't want Africans, they don't want Indians, they don't want people from the Middle East. Because we're coming through with the melanin. While their non-melanatedness is swiftly disappearing. Right next to the Neanderthal. France saw a dramatic fall in fertility rate over the last year, mm. going from 1.79% to 1.68. 
Obviously, a 0.1% decline in fertility in just a year is both dramatic and unsustainable. Um, now, when you're already on a decline, family, and these are the numbers you're facing, that's crazy. So that's a, in his lifetime, Macron will see France collapse. That's wild. Macron presumably wants to reverse this trend as early as possible. Thirdly, mm. the issue of low fertility rates interacts with Macron's anxieties about the pension system. French oh yeah, because they had those protests at one time, family. Remember them? Remember those protests when they're trying to change the age of retirement? Trying to force people to work longer? Because no new people are entering the workforce and therefore everybody who retires is going to take that entire productivity with them. There's an economy that is slowing down into stagnation and collapse. And they're trying to force a sustainable economy by forcing people to work past retirement age. And they were wilding out in the streets. It's all connected, family. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Generally retire pretty early. And Macron triggered riots last year when he tried to raise the pension age from 62 to 64 mm -hmm. to make the financing of pensions more sustainable. Low mm. fertility rates mean an aging population, which means more pensioners relative to working age people, mm -hmm. which would put even more strain on the pension system. Fourthly, the issue of low fertility rates interact with the issue of immigration, because if you have persistently See? low fertility rates, the only way to prevent your population from aging is to increase immigration because immigrants are generally younger and have higher fertility rates themselves. Yep. However, as we've detailed in previous videos, Europeans generally, including the French, are souring on immigration. And Macron pro Racists! That's why. They would rather maintain a white supremacist nation than a stable and functioning economy. That is wild to me. But that's the choice that they have made and the path that they have chosen. Royal family. As African peoples, we must focus on ourselves and our own economy and do each other justice than trying to run to these nations, keeping their economies afloat at our expense. I think the Germans are trying to change immigration laws. Yeah, we covered that in a previous video in order to make Germany more palatable to immigrants and migrants. Meanwhile, they are turning their backs on any random person who needs help. They only want the skilled peoples. So they want to drain us of our skilled workers to keep their economies alive while rejecting the undesirables. He yeah. realizes that balancing France's demographic pyramid with increasing numbers of migrants is politically unsustainable. So mm -hmm. that's what Macron is worried about. But what are his plans to actually get the French to have more babies? Well, the main thing seems to be replacing the current parental leave scheme, which is three years long but badly paid with a better paid but shorter scheme mm. that will allow both mum and dad to stay home with their new child for six months. This policy was actually first floated by the Solidarity and Family Minister last year, but was only due to come into force sometime in 2025. So it sounds like Macron wants to have it fast-tracked. Now, Macron didn't give any precise details about the new scheme, but it's reasonable to assume that he'll follow the recommendations of a parliamentary report published last year that called for the state to cover 67% of the salary, which is basically what happens in Germany. Unfortunately, though, the data suggests that this new policy is unlikely to significantly uh... increase France's fertility rate, let alone get it back to replacement rate. And that's because other even if what a lot of people don't seem to understand about fertility rates is that when you drop below a certain number, 1.9, it will take you about 100 years to recover. If you drop below 1.8, 1.7, family, 100 years flat and you will be gone, extinct. It's a wrap. So these 678,000 people being born in 2023 only is literally the only number of working age people who will be alive by the time that they get to that age. 
meaning the day will come when there are only 678,000 people alive and well to work all across France to join the army to do all those things. So it's already too late. There is nothing they can do. When you are below 1.7, that's it. The question is, are you going to go gently into the night? Or are you going to go down kicking and screaming? And throwing tantrums, burning the world as you go. That's where we are right now. Other European countries have tried similar things, like increasing parental leave, child benefits, and... Ch the EU faces a major demographic decline with... 27.3 million fewer people by 2100. That is not including people who are losing their lives today and have lost their lives since the, the pandemic, for example. They're going to do everything in their power to keep from going under. Expect care support, but the results have been mixed at best. Sweden, for example, has some of the most pro-family policies in Europe. You get eight months maternity and paternity leave at 80% salary, mm. and the government subsidizes about 90% of nursery costs, the most in the developed world. But Sweden's fertility rate hasn't been a replacement rate since the early 90s, and has actually been falling over the past decade to roughly 1.6 today. God damn. That doesn't mean that young Europeans are intrinsically anti-child. On the contrary, surveys show that Europeans generally wish they had more children than they actually do. Rather, mm -hmm. the correct takeaway here seems to be that if you want people to have more babies, you have to do more than just tinker around the edges. You have to make the European economy more friendly to young people by increasing wages and bringing down housing costs. You've no doubt been following along with the news from Israel and Gaza, but if you mm. want a better understanding, to dive deeper into the history of the region, then you should check out Real Life Law's hour-long documentary about the tensions and fighting between Israel and Gaza going back decades. It's a superb way to brush up on the history of this region, giving colour and context to what's happening right now. Yeah, I think that's it for that video. Also, it's not real as hell bent on erasing the next generation of Gazans. Which is ironic because in the West they're fighting declining birth rates, while in other countries they're promoting and committing genocide. We're promoting ideas that will cause a natural decline in fertility in those regions, as per the Kissinger report. That's the world we're living in, real family. On one hand, they promote ideas that will cause declining fertility in mineral rich nations while they're promoting ideas that promote fertility and family planning and family in their own nations. So they're playing games with nature and nature has decided to clap back. That's the world we're living in. And those are the current events that are unfolding as we see today, family. But as I've said before, nothing they do will change what is happening. Their birth rates are too low for recovery, never mind replacement, for recovery. So the question is, what are they willing to do in their final days in order to stay afloat? And how far are they willing to go to prove that they are very much the same people that colonize and destroy the world? Damn near. But that's it for today's video, Real Family. I appreciate you for watching. If you made it this far, if you enjoyed the video, smash that thumbs up for the algorithm. Let the algorithm know it's good. Let the like mind of souls know that we're out here with a share. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll appreciate you. I'm your host, Ramuri the High King. Stay royal, stay blessed, stay fertile, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.